hello everyone so today in this video we begin with first order first degree differential equations as the title suggests it's first order first degree meaning thereby that the differential equations in general are going to look like dy by dx first order and the power of dy by dx is also 1 because it's first degree you cannot have any higher order derivative because it's a first order differential equation and also since the degree is 1 so you cannot have any power attached to dy by dx so the most general form of a first order first degree differential equation looks like this you have dy by dx equal to some function of x and y that's the general form of a first order first degree differential equation now there are several categories here and accordingly we have several techniques of solving first order first degree differential equations and the first category which we'll be discussing in this video is the separable type or sometimes it's also called variable separable because this differential equation has a peculiar format that the right hand side function which you have in the general format separates into a function of x times a function of y so whenever this is the situation that you are able to express the right hand side function as a function of x times a function of y then you call it a separable differential equation and the rule for for, uh, for finding the solution of such differential equations is very elementary you just take the terms involving y with the dy and you take the terms involving x with this dx to write the differential equation as 1 by ny dy equal to mx dx then integrate both the sides you can integrate it's a function of y with respect to y you integrate it it's a function of x you integrate it with respect to x integrating both the sides the answer is going to be the integral of this function is equal to the integral of this function plus the constant of integration because the differential equation is a differential equation of order 1 so it has to involve one arbitrary constant in the final solution you know that the general solution of any differential equation involves as many arbitrary constants as is the order of the differential equation so this point needs to be kept in mind that order of a differential equation is exactly the same as number of arbitrary constants that are involved in the general solution of that differential equation so please keep this in mind that if you're solving a first order first degree differential equation since the order is one please do not write a plus c1 here for this integral and a plus c2 here and even if you write a plus c1 plus c2 separately then in the end please make sure that you combine those constants to write it as a single constant reflected in the general solution because in the general solution of any differential equation you should have as many arbitrary constants as is the order of the differential equation so let's take certain examples of the separable type very easy to understand and very easy to follow this uh, process of finding solutions so let's take the first example as let's say dy by dx is 6 e to part 2x minus y let's say this is the differential equation given to us and we are asked to find the general solution of this differential equation you can see that the right hand side which which we compare with fxy you can see that it splits into 6 e to power 2x into e to power minus y so you can write it as a function of x times a function of y that means this right hand side function is in separable format you can separate it into a pure function of x times a pure function of y and hence following the procedure you take this e to power minus y with the dy on one side and 6 e to power 2x with the dx on the other side integrate both the sides so this happens to be e to power y and integral of e to power y we know is e to power y only and here we have 6 e to power 2x therefore the integration is 6 e to power 2x upon 2 and here we write a single arbitrary constant because even if we write a c1 and c2 we have to in the end combine and write only a single arbitrary constant in the end so therefore the general solution is e to power y equal to 3 e to power 2x plus the constant of integration let's consider this example now look at this differential equation suppose we are asked to find the solution of dy by dx equal to y cot x 
and there is a condition mentioned along with the differential equation so instead of solving a differential equation the question is looking like this pair where you are given a differential equation together with some value of y at some particular point such questions are called initial value problems where you have a differential equation coupled with an initial condition so differential equation together with an initial condition the procedure is the same since it's the separable differential equation you are going to do it the separable way only with one difference it is going to add to a little work because in the end the constant of integration that we were getting after solving the first order first degree differential equation of separable type now we cannot leave the answer in that c uh, format because there is a condition mentioned so we have to calculate the value of c also it's like you know uh, when we solve a differential equation the general solution is not a single solution because it's dependent on c and c can run over r it can take any real value so in a way you are not finding a single solution you are actually finding a family of solutions which happens to be infinite when we come when we talk about general solution it's a family of solutions it's not a single curve all right but when we talk about initial value problems then we are looking for one particular member from that family which happens to satisfy this initial condition also so let's look at how we do um, the c part in the end how do we handle the c part using the initial condition let's quickly solve it we see that it's a separable differential equation y is separate cortex is separate so you have uh, the right hand side splitting into a pure function of x times a pure function of y so the procedure is the usual procedure you take one by y with the dy and cortex with this dx and of course integrate both the sides here we know it's log y and here we know it's log of sin x or mod of sin x to be sure because uh, log is not defined for negative numbers so it's always good to put a mod sign here so let's put a mod sign here also and since any function of an arbitrary constant is an arbitrary constant so it's always good to put the arbitrary constant in the log format if you want uh, your answer to look presentable in the end because this way you can combine logs and write the final answer uh, in a more presentable way so you see that your solution turns out to be y equal to c sin x right now y equal to c sin x is the general solution of this differential equation we are not looking for a general solution because it's an initial value problem we are looking for a particular member of this general solution family and such solutions are called particular solutions now look at the condition which is mentioned to you it says y at pi by 2 is pi by 2 so if you apply that condition here we are given that y at pi by 2 is pi by 2 so if you put it here this, how do you read it then x is pi by 2 y is also pi by 2 so doesn't that give me from here if i put the value as pi by 2 y is pi by 2 when x is pi by 2 so effectively i am getting my c as pi by 2 because sine pi by 2 is 1 that means the particular solution the required particular solution which satisfies this initial condition also is given by y equal to instead of c you have a pi by 2 sin x and that's the end of the solution so please keep in mind i would want to end with the line of caution that whenever you solve a differential equation solution is not a single solution it's an infinite family of solutions you are not getting a single solution when you are finding out the general solution it's an infinite family of solutions so general solution has infinite number of solutions you know contained in it but if it's an initial value problem that means you have certain initial condition also given to you then you are actually looking for one particular member from the general solution family and such solutions are called particular solutions so this solution will be a unique solution that you will be getting after putting the constraint which is mentioned via the initial condition so please keep this in mind that whenever you solve a differential equation you are not getting one single solution in the general solution family it's an infinite family of solutions and when you impose some initial condition on it then it becomes one particular member from that family which passes through the specified point so i hope this difference is clear to all of you in the next video we are going to learn about 
the differential equations which will not be separable to begin with but you can make some substitution and reduce them to separable so thank you so much for watching stay tuned